Hey guys, I hope you're doing well on this pretty eventful week in the AI automation space and I just wanted to jump on here and give you guys a bit more of a, now that the dust has settled, um, what my thoughts are on this new OpenAI Dev Day update and really what it means for AI agencies as a whole. I've had a lot of questions around like, oh, does this mean our, our tech stack's changed now? Are these certain tools uh, redundant? Does this mean there's going to be more people entering the space and it's going to be more competitive? There's a lot of, with any time there's change, of course, there's going to be a lot of a lot of fear and, and uncertainty. And I've had a real think on, on what these different features mean, where they fit into the landscape and um, really what myself and the team at Morningside are going to be doing. So I just want to break that down for you guys, hopefully give you a bit of clarity and kind of a, a mental model to, to understand what this platform is, uh, particularly like the agent kit and things like that where that's going to fit into your stack and and whether it's good or bad for us as agencies so first things first we had a lot to cover and now i'm not going to cover it all in this video only really the stuff that's super relevant to us as agencies obviously you've had the chat gpt update where you can have these applications that can sort of be used within chat gpt uh, i won't go too deep into that because we've had these kind of is this an app store moment multiple times now you've had chat gpt plugins you've had uh, gpts you thought there were these app store moments but they've flopped so i'm very hesitant to, to make a bit on that they promised us monetization and gpts which never really came and so uh, overall, I think there could be a, a, an opportunity there, but I think just stick a pin in it as if this does become an app store moment where you've got a, a new platform for building on similar to like uh, like the app store and iPhones and, and iPads and things like that, that gave birth to Instagram and Snapchat and these sort of applications. There could be that that sort of opportunity brewing there. But I think for now, we'll just focus on what we can use here and now today as agencies. And that's primarily going to be the agent kit and off that the agent builder and the chat kit as well. So these are massive updates and they're really, really, uh, this is another classic example of why being uh, an agency in the space is like such a such a good idea and because right here you can see i'm sitting there grinning not losing a wink of sleep over the stuff whereas if you are in SaaS and if you built a software you've just had the entire like, ground pulled out from under your feet and this is what we've been saying for a long time is that by being in the agency model you get to benefit from all the updates you get to bring them to your clients you get to take this awesome new stuff you get it to benefit essentially from these new dev tools that we get which is over time you just track it it's getting easier and easier and easier to deliver which is even better for us as service providers so when I first started, it was very, very difficult using Text DaVinci 003 text completion models to like Jira rig them into chatbots. And just from there, it's gotten so much easier. And this agent kit is really just the latest update in making the development and delivery of creating value with AI even easier for us as agencies. We're really the ones who are out there doing a lot of the work. So out of this new agent kit, agent builder and chat kit, what are the wins for us as agencies? Well, firstly, we have the building multi-agent systems is now accessible by a basic and no-code platform. And this is great for all of us. You might've had to use LangChain before in their multi-agent framework to get the same kind of functionality or you would have had to sort of rig up multiple agents in something like NA10 but this is just a continuation of the trend that I spotted back in 2023 and I I got clowned quite a lot for it back then and saying that you could build incredibly valuable AI systems for businesses on no-code tools and we've sort of come full circle now that OpenAI has actually released theirs and I think the writing's on the wall now how big this no-code AI automation thing has been over the past coming up three years now it's just another step towards that and now not only do we have agents that you can build but you have multi-agent frameworks which is what agent could allow you to do so visual editor drag and drop with a bunch of handy features like guardrails and you've got mcp servers it's just an incredibly great news for anyone even if you are an agency like us at morningside who are doing a lot of custom development we're looking at this and saying hey can we migrate some of our stuff over or can start to use agent kit and the agent builder to deliver a lot of our agency services like the insight that i had two and a half years ago now was that clients don't care how they get it they just want the thing like they don't care if you custom code it they don't care if you build it with like sticks and <laughs> lollipop sticks and blue tech they just want the thing and we're having to look now as an agency okay should we maybe start to try to do prototype can we approach this certain project maybe it's a chatting database like we're doing with one of our larger clients right now can we do that through the agent kit so i'm getting my developers to experiment heavily with that now and i think there's a there's a huge amount of potential there for agencies to start delivering even what we traditionally consider kind of more custom projects through something like this the second big win for us here is the chat kit and being able to build interfaces uh, i've been screaming this from the rooftops to anyone that would listen that the issue right now for for many agencies and for a lot of these agent building applications is it's difficult there's no, no one that really allowed you to easily create an agent on something and then integrate it into a custom front end and for us as agencies giving us say a link to like a relevance ai agent that has like the relevance branding and it, it cheapens the service right but you take that same agent that's powering that that interface and you connect it onto a custom white labeled front end that your client with your client's branding and some sort of custom widgets and stuff like that that really brings the chat app to life and you have a much 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 more valuable service so this chat could 
essentially allows you to vibe code together a custom interface to connect your agents to which is incredible news for again people who are coming into this without as much technical skills but also for people like with extensive development teams who want to be able to more quickly create these kinds of interfaces and deploy them so chat kit i think is a, is a stroke of genius from open ai has been much needed for a long time and i really urge you guys to get in there and start seeing how you can connect these agents from the agent builder over to these interfaces as well so massive one there for accessibility to building these because you typically would have to say you're a person with an ai automation skill set you've learned entertain or make.com you've got a really solid skill set there but when it came to oh the client wants custom website or custom chat app built you know oh, i now have to go and like get a developer to do it i don't really know how to do all of this so it's just a, a huge like value add that you can offer to your services and i just think it's, it's a great development for us as agencies another big win for us is of course just generally faster development and deployment but also the management and optimization of agents in production i think if you look at what openai is doing here i see it more so as they see that uh, anthropic has really crushed the ai coding market and the amount of money that they're making through the coding tools and, and through the api usage there is astronomical and open ai has been very heavily dependent on ChatGPT as the way that they make a lot of their money so i think this is a smart play for them to say hey we need to get we know there's issues with getting agents into production and these these automations why don't we focus on making a really good toolkit so that we can be the platform that people come to to put these into production and then when, once you stack enough businesses using that it's going to be incredible amounts of api usage going through there and that's how they're going to get a really solid and sticky base of customers um, to drive their business revenue so if you look closely at the agent builder it's got things like versioning so when you can publish it then you can tweak around tweak around and then publish again without affecting the live deployment so that's of course great for us in producing these production grade agents we also have stuff like the observability page for breaking down what happens in each run of the agent and i mean i just think that's that's incredible because you can start to see i mean it's pulling in a lot of these kind of lang chain features and other platforms that have been doing all the lm ops and it's bringing it all into one place for us and which is is incredible for us as, as agencies but now you can see hey if i wanted to i think there's there's multiple stages to development of these ai agent use cases for companies and you're sure it's just getting a, a proof of concept drawn mvp up and testing it around but once it's in production i believe a lot of the ai agency value that's going to be created over the coming sort of few years is as development becomes a lot easier they're going to come to the, the specialists who know how to get more out of it so it's like can you break down that observability why is it taking so long what models are being used can i use a cheaper one um how is this like how can i bring the timelines down and make this run better and so that optimization and the management of production AI agent systems, particularly these uh, multi-agent systems, I think is a really great way for agencies to start to get ongoing sort of retainer-based offers um, and also just overall provide a lot more value than just the initial development and deployment. So the observability, love that. I think it's an excellent tool for us. And it's also got those evals. So you can very easily type in, hey, did this agent do X? And you can evaluate all of the threads, all of the traces, I believe they're calling them now, for certain criteria. Is it, did this happen or this happen or does it take this tone? And again, it's just an incredible tool for us to be able to debug and sort dig into how these agents are operating in production so great production grade toolkit for us as agencies and that sets us up for great retainer offers with our clients and finally another big win for us here is that this is essentially cutting out the middleman if you think about it uh, when you use any kind of ai platform right now they're using the underlying models they're using OpenAI, anthropic all these other google gemini they're using these in their products but they need to make money too so they're putting their margin on top so you're paying the in some way you're, you're still paying for the open ai usage costs for the for say gpt5 and then this platform is usually slack on top their margin on top and then us as the agency or for our end customer is going to end up having to pay more in order to make sure everyone's still making money so you can see this as a way of kind of cutting out the middleman and by using this open ai ecosystem you're going to be getting essentially the raw api costs which is very 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 cheap compared to a lot of these platforms and then the ridiculous credit costs on some of these automation platforms so i think this is great overall for us as agencies if you're running it as a, as a retainer offer and you're the one paying the costs but also if we're developing it for our clients, we can say, hey, look, this is only going to cost a, a like sort of one fifth of what it would have cost on these other platforms because we're able to use this open AI ecosystem and cut out the middleman. So I, I really love that aspect of it as well. A question that I've got a lot recently around this is with this becoming more accessible now, does this mean that the model's kind of toast? Uh, businesses are just going to do it themselves. What, what does this mean for AI development moving forward? And I think it goes back to, if you just look at other industries, like, I mean, social media marketing is done via the Facebook ads manager. And there's still an enormous industry of specialists who can get the most out of that so i'm definitely in the camp of when there are core business systems like agents like particularly on the acquisition side if it's bringing in more business if it's on customer support they want to use experts they don't want to go in there and just you're not going to risk getting the one employee who's maybe spent a couple months tinkering around with ai to build your entire customer support system out on this right these things the value accrues to us as the 
agencies who are delivering on it's dev tools it's a developer dev day right they're tools for us it's not like business day so just keep in mind that these things are helping us they help us to deliver more quickly uh, and sure the odd business might go in there and try to have a tinker around but at the end of the day it still seems big it still seems scary and the specialists who can get the most out of it who can do that breakdown of okay what where's the money being spent okay how long is it taking how can i evaluate this to make sure it's working correctly how can i optimize it over time that is really where a lot of our value as agencies go when i mean the development becomes so easy with these things that we just go in there set it up and we work with them back and forth to get really the best results out of it and you can just start to offer way more systems you can do more for your clients for the same amount of time so it's a, it's a win for us and it's a win for them another question is of course what does this mean for platforms like n18 and zapier and make and where does it fit into your stack when should you be using this when should you be using those so i think the easiest way for for me to understand maybe might be helpful for you guys as well is i see this play as kind of like the apple of ai automation where uh something like n18 you could see as maybe microsoft or android where it's more customizable um it's not as a kind of a closed closed circuit or closed uh closed environment and closed ecosystem so the apple model with their devices and, and things like that was that we're gonna have this family of devices they're all gonna kind of talk together and we're gonna have our own operating system that is very closed and we have to sort of it's very managed we manage the whole user experience across all devices and you could look at agent kit and the agent builder as kind of the start of this open ai ecosystem of ai automation where it's the user experience is going to be so seamless where they may not have the absolute best model in every single kind of uh, use case but if they've got a really good model they've got a couple different versions of it you've got gpt5 pro you've got the normal one you have a small like uh, faster performing one that's a bit cheaper you can go down to gpt40 as long as they've got a good mix of these these models that serve different purposes then within the agent kit it's able to assemble those in, in the right way and you're not necessarily like mm, man i really wish i could pull in a claude model here they're essentially saying we've got pretty much everything you need here and we're going to make it super seamless for you to set them up and, and connect them together we're going to handle all the difficult stuff of making sure they're talking together and when you add on to that something like a text to workflow or kind of viable automation where you can type in and say hey i want to build a workflow or, or an agent system that does this and then they're able to just piece it all together with their own ecosystem and literally within seconds you can have a workflow that's ready to go take a few minutes to build a custom interface and deploy it it's a pretty compelling direction that openai is going in terms of making it easy for developers to do like everything and the question is are you going to start to use that more or do you want the flexibility and customization of something like n18 so i think they've definitely got the work cut out it seems right now that the agent builder doesn't have all of the triggers that you'd probably want and something like a a make.com and it also doesn't have a lot of the non ai parts that you need for building out kind of any workflow so it's going to be interesting to see if they pursue that and say look we are actually coming for their lunch we want to build out essentially a make.com or an na10 equivalent but within our own ecosystem or they're saying no we want to be more this kind of multi-agent thing only and not necessarily taking over every automation use case so the the jury's still out on that one i think a good way to maybe understand what this is in its current form would be like a a, a voice flow but without the control that voice flow gives you in terms of being able to write specific messages so like it's very non-deterministic whereas something like voice flow is a good mix of like the agentic capabilities with also being able to really make a deterministic system of this happens and this happens and sends this message so that's sort of a, a, a how I, i'm thinking of it right now so yeah those are my thoughts on this uh, dev day update i think it's a massive win for for agencies anytime we get new dev tools it's a massive win for us and that's why we that's why we do this stuff right it allows us to just surf along all of these massive updates we have had updates like this previously like the assistance api and gpt's release when that came out just like this has it nuked so many startups because they were taking they were kind of building ahead of open ai in many ways and they're adding custom launch bases and tooling to to the chat completions endpoint and then they dropped the assistance api and just sort of absorbed all of those different use cases and so more than ever it is a dangerous time to be in SaaS, but a incredible time to be in agencies where we get to benefit from this and development gets easier we can we can deliver much faster we can deliver a broader range of services without having technical capabilities it's just a, a massive win for us so i hope you guys are all as excited as i am to jump in and start building this and delivering it uh, some client projects with this stuff so yeah the the sky is not falling everything is all good and uh, if you guys want to check out more on this kind of viable automation idea which i think is very very relevant um, as this development becomes easier and easier i've got a video up here breaking down what viable automation is um, and how this text to workflow revolution is really coming for agencies and businesses wanting to adopt AI automation so that's all guys i hope this has been helpful and i'll see you in the next one